Well, surely this is indeed the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I am so delighted to be coming to you once again this morning on this kingdom experience as we continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. It is my hope that as we go through the pages of this book, as we begin to learn together and hear what God has to say to us, that it will not only rejuvenate your life, but it will take you on a plateau to new heights and higher heights in Christ Jesus. I'm excited. I want those of you who've been watching us throughout the length and breadth of the Bahamas, those of you around the world, I just want to say God bless you. Thank you so much for sharing, for spending time with us as we share the wonderful works and the wonderful new good news of Jesus Christ. And so I pray that you are inspired, encouraged, revived, strengthened to go from day to day. Could you go with me in a word of prayer? Father, we are just so delighted that we can come to you on another day, uh, truly the day that you've made as we rejoice and we are glad in it. I pray a profound blessing now upon the hearer. Lord, enlighten them, enrich them, empower them to be all that you have purposed them to be. I pray that every word that I speak would be approved of heaven. Bind my will and make it thine. I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus that you would get the glory and you alone out of this experience. And at the end of this, may you be glorified, you be magnified, and you be lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Today I want to speak to you and if you notice over the last um, several, um, weeks has passed, we begin to just speak words of encouragement and speaking to the enrichment of you as the body of Christ. And so today I want to speak to you from this understanding God and the essence of his Godness. Understanding God and the essence of his Godness. See, why is that important? Because if we ever get to understand God in the fullness of who God is, I believe it will revolutionize our lives. I believe that if we really understand God from the perspective of who he is, it will change our perception of God. I was in a conversation with one of my ministers and he was he was sharing with me, and, he, and, 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 and I believe I'm, I'm okay to talk about this. And we were talking about God. And he started to, to share his thoughts. And he said something that I thought was very, very uh, intriguing. I thought it was very enlightening. And he started to speak about God. And he said, oftentimes we see God from a perspective of almost... Uh, expectationary, and you may say what I mean. We, we, we speak to God and we speak from a position of entitlement. And some of you may say, yes, the Bible said, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. But what he was trying to make mention is that we were engrafted in. We were not the original Jews by 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 physical bloodline, but we were the engrafted by faith. There was a people that Jesus Christ had come for. He came for the lost sons of Israel, but he said, as many as received me to him, give I power to become the sons of God. He spoke about the fact that first God has sent me, I came to my own, but my own received me not. But as many as received me to them, give I power to become sons of God. He spoke about the fact that they were called to a specific physical geographical people. But those people did not embrace the fullness. And so God said to as many as. And so we have been on the, and as he would put it, he says, we came through the back door. We were the engrafted as a result of those who should have embraced the fullness when God raised up the Israelites, he raised them up to become the envy of the world. That all through them, because of his 
working in his power and his wonderful works in their lives that the world would become jealous and want their God. But we know throughout scripture there were fallings and failures and shortcomings. And so God begins to go through and he raised up the judges and he raised up the nations and he raised up all kinds of things. And finally, he now concludes with the raising up of the church. And we become now the children, the engrafted children by faith. But what am I speaking to you about? I want to speak to you from the essence that if we understand God in his perspective, we will approach God in a way that brings the kind of breakthrough that we are desiring from him. If we come to God with an understanding that we are not entitled, but because of his grace, that grace was the vehicle that drew us to him. Grace is the vehicle that God did not, he didn't have to do it. His love compelled him to do it for us. While we were yet sinners, he died. There is a God that loves us, cares for us, extends himself, gave the only begotten son that we may enjoy the fullness of his bountiful glory. I want you to understand that God in his very essence is love. God in his very essence is is care. God in his very essence is harmony, oneness, joy. The fruit of the Spirit is the nature of God. He is long-suffering towards us, not wishing any perish. But what are you saying all of this for? Because I need you to understand, when I, when I understand this, when I, I have a better appreciation for God. See? And so I don't have to live like if God doesn't move when I fast, that he has disappointed me. I understand that sometimes God will move when I pray. There are times when God will allow me to walk through the process. God don't always do it the way we clip our fingers and he manifests. God sometimes going to allow your prayer to be the vehicle by which your victory comes. And then other times God going to say, baby, you got to walk this. Why? Because it is the perfecting of the experience is that is going to make you what God wants you to be. Some things you just can't pray your way out of. You got to walk your way out of it. I believe with all my heart. That our posture now needs to change in relationship, in relation to who God is. You got to come to the place where you understand that he is indeed who he says he is. As I was looking in the book, I looked at the book of 1 Kings um, chapter 20, verses 26 to 29. And it says, and it came to pass at the return of the year that Ben-Hadad numbered the Syrians and, when, and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were numbered and were all present and went against them. Watch this. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids. But the Syrians filled the country. Now what was happening? When they stood up and they were getting ready to fight, it says that the Syrians were so vast in numbers that the, the multitude of the army of men looked like a blanket over the whole country. But Israel looked like two little flock of kids. In other words, two little sheep, two little puffs. And this was what the word says. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus says the Lord God, because the Syrians have said the Lord is the God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Therefore, will I deliver all this great multitude in thy hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. He said, because they've despised me in their hearts, 
because their arrogance have gone up before me. He says, I'm going to show them that I am El Shaddai. In the word El Shaddai, I am God Almighty. Every now and then, God will flex his muscle to show you who he is. I don't care how it feels. I don't care what it looks like. But he is God not only of the hills, but the valley and everything in between. I'm here to remind you that this God, that when you understand him in his essence, you will understand that whatsoever state I'm in, therewith I've learned to be content. If I can teach you anything this morning, I want you to get to the place that if you put your petition before God and you put your faith out there and it doesn't come, that you can still rest that whether it happens or it doesn't, it doesn't change the very essence of who God is. This is what made the four Hebrew boys who they were. They came to a conclusion when they were passed in the fire. They said, listen, King, if he blesses, if he delivers us, he's God. If he doesn't, he's God. Can we come to that church of the living God where that if God shows up, we don't stop believing. If he doesn't show up, my faith still stands in firm foundation because I know God is a deliverer. The sad commentary is that we come to a time in our lives where God got to do it every time for us to trust him. It is a sad cry in the day of Christendom when we've got to believe God based upon what he does for us. If he doesn't do it, he's still God. If he doesn't come through, he's still God. If he comes and he moves, he's still God. We've got to come. Some people ask and it happens. Some people take it and it gets it. Some people got to wait for it. We've got to know whatever state I'm in, therewith I've learned to be at peace. The measure of our victory in this season has to be with a comfort, resoluteness in our minds that God is God whether he comes through today, tomorrow, or next year, that I ain't going to trust him and I'm going to fast and then say, I'm believing God by the end of the day or the end of next week, God's going to do it. And we come and put a petition before God and a fast before God and we make demands on God and God chooses not to do it in the time frame. And then we lose heart because we want to be that this big thing, big stuff and clip our fingers and God is in heaven just answering our prayers. Sometimes God says, no, I'll do it when I can do it. Why? Because I'm God. I'm the God El Shaddai. I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm El Elyon. I'm Jehovah Shammah. He says, I'll do it when I want to do it. Why? Because the four corners of the earth was created. The circle of the earth was made by God. We've got to understand God in the essence of who he is. And we've got to approach him with the level of reverence that is due unto him. We've got to, in this season, recognize that he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, that he is God all by himself. And so the Syrians in 1 Kings 20, 26 to 29, the Bible says, and the king, and when Israel came, they looked like little flock of kids. In other words, there were two little puffy things in comparison to this blanket of people of the enemy. And then God sent the prophet. And God sent the man of God to the king of Israel. And he said, thus says the Lord. Because the Syrians have said the Lord is the God of the hills. But not of the valley. Therefore will I deliver all of them. This great multitude into thine hand. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. He says, if I've got to prove myself, I'm going to prove myself to you. That the world is saying that he is not God. We got to understand that he is still God. He is God of the hills and the valley. He is God of your big time and the small situation. He's the God of, of, of your enough. And you're more than enough. Can you a little bit? He is God of everything you can believe. We've got to come to the place where our faith stands sure, irrespective of how things look around us. I know that my Redeemer lives. Ooh. Can you trust Him? 
Listen, I don't care how it look. Can you trust him? If you are saved only to get stuff from God, hear me. The Bible says that every man work shall be made manifest what it is. Hear me. If your salvation is based on stuff, you are in shallow water. If your salvation is based on what God could give you, you are void and empty of the essence of, of the goodness of, goodness of God. You are empty. God wants someone who can love him because he's worthy to be praised. Love him because he first loved you. Love him because he's worthy of your love. Love him because he has prepared a place for you. Love him because he cares and he wishes not that you perish. But that he is prepared to share not only himself, but his home with you. Hear me. Understanding God in the very essence of who he is. We have to understand that he's long suffering towards us, not wishing any perish, that the God we serve will put up with us. I'm sorry, but I will not ascribe to the to this theology that others preach, that this, this bitter mad God who's hiding and lurking in the dark, waiting for you to mess up and beat you. How come you don't do it to your child? You are patient with them even when they do the most foolish and dumb stuff. You can show love, but our God is bitter and angry. And he who created the family don't know how to love and be patient with us. If the God of the ages, if the scriptures can say, while we were yet sinners, he died. He died while we were in the mess. Do you understand the gravity of that? While you were in it, he was going to the cross for you. That's a love unprecedented. That's a love like no other. But you could put up and have patience with your rude child. But God has beat up his. What man of love the father. Ooh, what am I saying? I'm saying that he is long-suffering towards us. You know the word long-suffering? Go in your concordance, in your dictionary. Long-suffering means he suffers long. He put up with. He is not eager to destroy us. This amazing God defends us at all costs, fights for us at all costs. Goes to bat for us at all costs. Loves us. Why? Because he put himself in us. And he bred into the nostrils of man. And man became a living soul. You became a living soul because he cares. I want you to understand. You are valuable to God. You are valuable to him. I know you wish to change some stuff and get they will break through and, and get some money and all them stuff and just hold this. But I want you to know that the Bible says, see, what's this? As we align ourselves, what's this? Seek first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing things. And all things, all these things shall be added. The things shall be added as we seek first. Once we put our priority in place and we understand him in the essence of who he is. Tragedy, however, is that many instances we don't always learn what God is so desperately trying to teach us during the process of life. God is trying to teach us stuff. We allow the times of trauma of the experiences to overwhelm us to the point that we forget that there is something to be learned in the experience. 
And so when you go through life challenges, it's not God abandoning you. It's not the devil just trying to destroy you. God's trying to get you to a place and he's trying to perfect that which is concerns you. He's trying to bring you to a place of maturation. So he puts you through the process. And what we do is we hate the process. We want to skip from start to completion and God says you can't be good for me if you just skip all of the process because the process is what is preparing you to walk in your dominion. You need the process. The process teaches you how to be tough. Some of you are tough because you grew up tough and now you use it for God's glory in the kingdom. I'm talking about being rude. I'm talking about being tough. You've learned how to endure hardness because life taught you some stuff and some principles. And you've learned how to endure some hardness and hard stuff. Why? Because you learned it in life lessons. So now you can implement it in your spiritual journey for success. Ooh. But we have to learn. And one of the things is we got to learn how to trust God in the process. Yes, we want everything. And so if, if, if God gives it to you and God comes down and you hear the prophecies and he comes down and he presents it to you and he says, okay, here it goes. When the devil then who cuts, who has the right by, by his invasion to, to scrutinize or to challenge the gift. If you're not built up in your most holy faith, how can you stand? Hear me in life, the enemy will challenge everything God presents before you. When God blesses you, remember Job, he says, did, did Job, did Job serve you for naught? God gave them. And he said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? He said, yeah, I've been looking at him. But let me ask a question. Did he serve you for nothing? I recognize you give him everything and you have a hedge around him. You don't allow me to touch him. But I guarantee you, if you let me touch him, he will curse you to your face. The devil will cross-examine us. With every blessing in our life. That's why we have to be anchored in God. Because the true reality is. God wants to become God of all. Or not God at all. And so you've got to surrender everything. So when God comes into your heart. When God comes into your life. You're able to stand. Why? Because the devil will challenge everything that God presents before you. He will question it. And he will cause you to think and he will make you believe that it was not God. I want you to understand. But what are you talking about, Bishop? I'm trying to bring a reality to you. That the enemy will say, yeah, he's God of the hills. He's God of the high places. Yeah, he's God of all of them. But he, he don't know how to, to come condescend to low estate. I want you to know God got it all in control. He is the God of the heavens, but he ain't God of the earth. The devil is a liar. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. The earth is God's own. He has given managerial authority to the met, to humanity, to us. And we've got to walk and delegate the authority and walk in the dominion that we have been allowed to walk in. But we've got to understand in this season, I ain't taking no prisoners. I ain't going to be no tail. I am the head and I am overcomer. And the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I'm here to tell somebody, you've got to rally to the occasion. The day of sitting down and Playing dead is over. You've got to rally in your prayer life. You've got to rally in your study life. You've got to rally in your commitment to the things of God. I'm here to tell you it's time to seek the Lord. It's time to do more for God. It's time to show the devil that God could count on me. It's a reckoning day. Hear me. We must understand God in the essence of his godness. 
that listen, I love him. If he comes and he blesses me today, I love him. If he doesn't bring anything, it doesn't change who he is. I've learned how to be content. And content is not satisfied with not having, but at peace with my station until he chooses to change it. Because anything other than that is a slap in God's face because many times we forget what he done do. All you got to do is lay on your bed and look back and see how you lived, how you came, how you got through, what the things you've done, what you've experienced in your life. Some things that some people have never had the privilege to experience. And we've not stopped one time to say, God, I thank you for what you done give me. Can you give him praise for what you done have? One day, God bless my mom, wonderful soul. She's in the presence of God. And, and, and all my life, I've been accustomed to, to one, to two and three meats from when I was young. My father loved fish and he could eat fish every day. Fish and oxtails. Fish and oxtails. Love it. Yeah. And daddy loved to fish and oxtails. So my mom would make sure that whatever it was he wanted was cooked. And if we wanted something different, she did it. And that birth, him having three. Sometimes we have pork chop, fish, and the next meat. And sides. And that's how we, we ate. There were people in our community who couldn't have that. And there were times when, 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 when mom would have done in those special times when things were, and she would do one meat. We thought she sinned. Mommy, only one meat? And my mother would say to her, you better thank God you got something to eat. I don't want that. And that's how we throw up ourselves in God's face many times. Where God has been so good to us and we forget that he brought us a long way. And we forget that we are privileged to enjoy some stuff that many people are not privileged to have. And before we stop and say, God, I just pause to say, thank you for what you done give me. We rather complain and argue and talk about what we have and what we get and sit down. When last did you thank him for what you got? When last did you give him glory for what he done do? When the last did you say, if you're going to work, it's three days. It's still better than someone got no days. Give God glory for what you got. If somebody Walk up and put something in your hand. Thank God because some people who have a hand to get nothing in. Can you give him glory for what you don't have? This is what we need to be. A, gratitude, a people of gratitude. A people of thanksgiving. A people that says, I appreciate your goodness. And everything we want, but what he ain't give us yet. What if he never give it to you? You can go meet him mad. Do you dare stand in the face of God and say, you ain't give me what I was looking for. I taught you to give me a child. I taught you to give me a husband. I taught you to give me a wife. I taught you to give me that job. I taught you to give me a house. I taught you to give me, that's what you're going to do? You better thank God for the fact that if you're walking on your legs that belong to you, give him glory because some people are, Woo. understand God. I'm feeling this, I'm finished. I'm feeling this today. Because I just feel a sense of gratitude and a sense of urgency to say to you, give him thanks for what he's already done. He's a God who's been good to you. He's been better to you than you've been to yourself. If you're watching this, then you're alive. There's some people who could not watch this. I'm preparing now to interment some people who their family would move heaven and earth for them to be here. And we got voices 
But we're more concerned about what we don't have. To feed this flesh. And we fail to give him glory. To understand him in the essence of who he is. He loves you. He's long-suffering, not wishing any perish. He's not only God of the hills, but he's God of the valleys. And I want to leave this unfinished. And the Lord, what he says, the king, the man of God spoke to the king of Israel and he said unto him, thus says the Lord, the Syrians have said to themselves that he is God of the hills, but not God of the valleys. And because they have said this, I will deliver them into your hands. Because they were proud enough to believe in their own ability, I'm going to give them over to you. Those who they call flock of kids. Whenever we are ungrateful, we become vulnerable. When all, whenever we are unthankful, we become vulnerable to the gaze and the upper, to the attack of the enemy. He says, because you couldn't honor God for what he was deserving of, he says, listen, I'm going to give them over to you. And you will know that I'm the Lord. I am El Shaddai. I am the Almighty One. He is still Almighty. He will always be Almighty. You got to catch it and understand His Almighty power in your life. And they pitched, last verse, one over against the other in seven days and it was and the bible says in seven days the battle was joined and the children of israel slew of the syrians a hundred thousand footmen in one day oh my goodness verse 29 they died a hundred thousand died in one day because they dared to disrespect god don't disrespect the goodness of god He's a keeper. If I were you, like I take this for me, let's be grateful for what he done do. Let's show God by taking this time today and saying, God, I'm come, I just come to say thank you for being good to me. If your shop only made $6, someone didn't make any. If it made $60, some didn't make any. If it made $6,000, give him praise, but some still didn't make any. If this is your season and you're seeing a blow, a, a, a increase in your, in your revenue, give him praise. Because listen, there are times and seasons and every season, there will be a season when they won't have what you got, but... For now, give him glory and give him praise and remember how to be a blessing to God. Don't take it to mean that what you're getting in your hand is yours and that you can't give back to God for his goodness. Stop acting like you can, that God has forgotten and God will remember. When you was, things was going blingy, you got to, this is the time to trust God. This is the time to show God I appreciate you. This is the time to show God that everything I have and everything I got came from you. The Lord is our helper. The Lord is our very present time of trouble. Please don't forgive him. Don't forget him. Hear me. Don't forget God. Don't let COVID cause you forget God. It would be a sad cry if that you abandon God during this time. Then it means that your roots were not founded in good soil. It was founded in stony ground. And God said, this is the season when you must catch a hold of yourselves. And give God the glory to his name. And you have that testimony. That COVID couldn't conquer me. What could separate me from the love of God? Can famine, can COVID? No, it can. What can separate God from my love? Can famine, can COVID? That's the question he was asked. What can separate God from you? Can COVID? 
can lack? What can separate God from you? And if you are lesser potent because of your experience, then your foundation has been compromised. I want to challenge you. Understand God. He is long-suffering. He's loving. His arms are ever stretched to you, saying, come, I'll keep you in perfect peace as your mind stay on me. Don't abandon him. There's nowhere else to run to. Don't leave him. You have nothing else to go to. He loves you. And he wants the best for you. Let's give God all of us. As he gives us all of him. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I pray today for every individual present. Those who love you but struggle at expressing that love. Show them yourself and show them your great and glorious hand. Arise in them, O oh God, and show your power strong and mighty. Let the God of all ages be their portion today. I speak victory in the hearts of those who want you but don't know how to find you. I speak, God, a spiritual navigator system to draw them and direct them through the terrain of life and bring them to your bleeding side. I pray God for transformation and change. I decree in the name of Jesus that the soul, that, that the believer will truly be connected to you like never before. Because God, if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have another building not made with hands. Eternal in the heavens. Make us sure of the fact that if you call us, we will be ready to go with you. Teach us how to love, how to be patient, how to be kind, and how to understand you in the essence of who you are. That whether things happen immediate or it takes time, our faith in you will not deviate or change. We will stay true to our confidence that the Lord will provide. Bless us today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so very much. I want to make a special challenge to those of you who have been blessed by this wonderful presentation. Not just today, but this kingdom experience. I want to challenge you to partner with us, those of you who can. Now, I know things are extremely difficult, but the Bible says he gives seed to the soul. And to those who sow, he gives seed. I want to encourage you to do something special to help us carry this gospel, to help us fulfill God's purpose as we now prepare ourselves to not only feed the hungry, clothe the needy, but to carry God's vision throughout our nation. And you can help us by doing, giving to the work of God. We've not asked from we started, but we've made it available. And so today we reach out to you. If you believe that God is with us, then we want you to do your part. God will bless you for every seed you sow. On our screen, you will see the opportunities that are available to you. You can call our number 727-8999 and we will do our best to meet you. So there are three giving opportunities online that will be on the screen. God bless you and may the favor of God be your portion. This we ask in Jesus' name.